it's time to get this uh, rear swing arm and linkage cleaned up and disassembled um, there's quite a bit of work that needs to get done to this the main thing is going to be getting these uh, swing arm bearings replaced get the shock refurbished the linkage bearings replaced uh, here 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 and then I'm going to be disassembling the axle and if it's in good shape we'll change out the bearings and this disc I'm pretty sure this is bent uh, the sprocket seems fine but um, I will double check that and see if we're going to reuse it or replace it. Uh, and obviously we'll check this and make sure that it needs to be replaced um, because they are pretty pricey. But other than that, my main goal is to get this cleaned up, ready to go back onto the frame so that I can put the swing arm bolt through the frame and the motor and do some of the uh, testing on the motor and make sure it's going to run. and you know, hear that thing fire up for the first time in a long time before really going any further with this build. So that's the plan and we'll get to it. stop here and uh, just show you the swing arm so I sprayed it with free all which is basically like a penetrating oil uh, but it's the closest thing I had to WD-40 and WD-40 was uh, with scotch Bright was the easiest thing I can use to get off all the two-stroke uh, oil spatter and grease marks from or sorry grease uh, deposits from the chain so um, it really cleans up everything easier than just trying to degrease and degrease and degrease so I just hit the whole thing with it um, I still have a little bit to do this is what I'm referring to all of this two-stroke spatter um, I need to clean up the shock clean up the link arm change the bearings out and rebuild the shock we can see it actually leaked for a while so I doubt it's any good inside so I went ahead and I painted all of this stuff um, I painted this linkage arm uh, this is aluminum so I just buffed that out and then uh, this brake stay I painted and uh, basically that was after I got the bearings pressed into the linkage and to the swing arm um, I threw it up in the quad and I kind of got ahead of myself especially because I wasn't recording but I just got too excited so I threw the motor in and it just cascaded into uh, kind of getting a bunch of the stuff put on. So the uh, pipe I've cleaned uh, with crud cutter. So I'll show that in a little bit. And I cleaned the main pipe as well. This stuff was just covered in two stroke oil that was burnt on and it was really hard to get off. Um, but I did have to order this bolt. I lost it somehow. So that's the one that goes straight through all the way across. So I ordered the bolt and nut and I did polish every bolt that I put on. So there was a ton of crusty old bolts. So I um, clean it with the wire wheel on a drill and then I put the bolt into the drill, tighten it and I put some polish on a microfiber and put it on the bolt head and spin it. So it takes time, but you can do it. I did all of these when I built the motor. So these are all factory. Um, you could polish them all out. It just depends on how much work you want to do. Um, this is still the stock one. I just cleaned it up. Um, I did get the Kaufman titanium bolt that goes straight through the swing arm and the motor uh, because the other one was all jacked up. And uh, I also painted this one as well with the linkage arms. So uh, these two screws are brand new, uh, but every other one is polished factory 
and I went with the billet oil cap and I thought this one was really cool because it's got this little snap ring uh, pin deal so it, if it does loosen up it won't unscrew and fall out it'll still stay there so I really like that um, I got the original kickstand or the kickstarter with a brand new bolt I don't know what they were doing on the last um, setup but it was a 10 millimeter bolt with a washer so I ordered the correct one uh, which also has some from the factory a little bit of blue Loctite so I'm not done setting everything up yet so I didn't want to crank it down uh, but we're making huge huge progress I'm really loving how it's coming out uh, I still have to figure out what to do with the plastics and all that but for now I'm not going to get too ahead of myself I still need to clean and assemble a lot of things and I really want to get the jug onto the motor it'll clear up some bench space and um, it'll just fill in that area a little bit more and I'll start really seeing the light at the end of the tunnel um, there is a CFM aluminum air box on order and I did get a secondary radiator set up so there'll be a secondary radiator right here um, as soon as that comes in along with the factory uh, mounted radiator but that one is an aluminum aftermarket so let's just keep cranking on it and keep going i figured i'd might as well throw the jug on and just get that out of the way uh, it's something i've been putting off just because i'm a little bit nervous i've never done it before especially on a two-stroke and this build has been crazy to say the least it's taken forever but um when i first got the uh build started i got a bicycle piston kit with gaskets that came with it one of the things I didn't like was the green. Uh, you can see it when everything's assembled. And uh, that was the case on this gasket as well. That The green was in the Wysco kit. So I found a new old stock gasket that's black. And same for that. So I got them all to match. And I ended up buying a brand new old stock head gasket as well. So everything was black when it was assembled. But one thing I noticed right away was this little silicone bead all the way around every bolt hole around the whole jug mating surface and uh, you compare it to aftermarket and there's just none of that so i can see why some people recommend putting silicone uh, with the aftermarket gasket but man it's a shame they don't make these anymore because this is really amazing for what it is especially being a 87 um i'm gonna try to find another one if I can, but if you guys want to, you can look yourself. That's the part number right there. Uh, that's what the guy on eBay shipped it in. So if you look that up, that's for a 87. I don't know if it fits any other years. I know the 87 is a unique year on its own. Um, but I also went a step further and I got the head gasket as well for the head to the jug. Um, the Wysco kit, when I bought it, I didn't really anticipate going so deep with it, um, but it did come with a new base gas or sorry, a head gasket. I just, I figured I bought all brand new ones from Suzuki. I might as well just buy, uh, everything. So that leads us to where we are now and I'm just going to keep moving forward. huge guys i have not had this engine back in the quad for 10 years and i'm stoked um it is super stressful putting a motor together complete from the ground up and i was really putting off that uh cylinder jug install for a long time uh mainly i wanted it in the frame so i can torque everything down instead of fighting with it on the bench but just, I was just, you know, really did not want to do it. Um, I don't know why I get in my head sometimes, but man, I am super happy. I can't believe that I'm back to this uh, and almost back in the dirt, you know, but just way better than I could have ever imagined. But yeah, I'm going to keep going. Got to get the head on and uh, get all the wiring back on this thing. Sort out the fuel, sort out the brakes and get, on, get cracking on the suspension. Um, 
I've got plans to rebuild the rear shock, but the uh, fronts I'm gonna have to replace for sure. So let's just keep cranking on. I ran into a little snag uh, during the end of the install today, but it's easy. So this bolt does not want to go through. It is angled down just a bit. So what that tells me is I need to loosen up the motor mount bolts on both sides, as well as this long one that goes through and uh, get the slack to put that back where it needs to go with the nut and then tighten them all down. So I knew I was kind of risking it earlier, tightening all these down with the weight down to the bottom, but I didn't think it was gonna uh, be that far off. I mean, this one's, it's a good eighth inch or quarter inch off. So there's no way I'm shoving that through there. And um, this is still not torqued yet. So it's definitely these lower mortar mounts that just need to get loosened and just bring it up a smidge. But other than that, I am stoked on it. I haven't seen this motor look like this in forever. And uh, seeing all the parts I bought throughout the years just fall together is beautiful. I mean, that cool head right now, you can't even get them. On eBay, uh, their seller that sells on there is back ordered months. Um, the cylinder was re-sleeved at LA Sleeve, Wisco piston kit. Everything in the motor is brand new. Like I said on the other video, I even bought a brand new sprocket. Um, it's crazy. You know, I'm trying to do everything I can. I bought this tab brand new to wrap around the wires, uh, but I want it to be nicely detailed when it's all assembled. So um, on this side, I was able to get the power valve uh, clipped on. So I just need to set the spring. And that involves uh, putting the spring deal in here, spinning it 360, sliding it in and putting the bolts. And you can dial it in uh, based off your writing. So let's see. There's the valve right there at the bottom and it opens based off whatever RPM you have it set to. So that's fully opened right there and that's gonna be fully closed. So uh, if you set it to open at a lower range, you have more torque, but less top end. If you set it to open at a higher range, it has more top end, but less bottom end. Uh, I believe it's supposed to be anywhere from 4,000 to 4,500 RPM is where you want it to open. Uh, but some people just keep spinning and fiddling with it until they get it to their own personal writing style. So we'll see how I end up doing it, but I'll probably start at the recommended 360 and go from there. Either way, huge progress. Can't wait to get this thing down on the ground. Um, even just kickstarting it right here with my hand, it sounded like it had some great compression. So let's see if we can do that on the camera. Jeez, I can't even do that at all let's see hopefully this thing's a screamer this thing's ready to go it's been a long time coming and i hope you guys stick with me and watch the other videos so we can see the final outcome i've got a few more tricks up my sleeve for how this thing's going to look at the end uh, but for now, stay tuned. Keep an eye on the playlist. I'll update it as soon as I can.